All right. Hey, everybody. Welcome once again to another episode of the Remarkable Coach Podcast. As always, I'm your host, Michael Pacheco, and today with me, I have Sohi June. Uh, did I pronounce that right, I think? Ah, uh, ish. It's Jun. <laughs> Jun? Okay. Sohi Jun. Jun. I'm pronouncing it. Okay. I, I, I went to university in Tokyo. I went to university in Japan, so I'm pronouncing it like as if it were Japanese. It's not. <laughs> it's similar. <laughs> Um, uh, Sohi. So as Sohi is a top leadership coach, keynote speaker, leadership development expert, and best-selling Amazon author. She works with emerging leaders and executives to unleash their untapped power for themselves and their teams. Sohi, welcome to The Remarkable Coach. Thank you very much. I've been looking forward to this combo. <laughs> I know. It's so, uh, we, I know we had to reschedule... I think just once. I hope just once. I remember rescheduling once. Yeah, just once. <laughs> and we so made I, it. Here we are today. <laughs> I appreciate your your patience there. And thank you. Yeah, thank you for making time to, to chat with me. Sure. Um, to kind of kick off the, the podcast, I always like to invite our guest to just tell us a little bit more about yourself in your own words and why you do what you do. Gosh, I... I, I have the honor, I think, you know, I love sharing the story, which is, I don't see what I do as work in the typical sense, I see it as a way for me to use my superpowers to be in service of highly successful women and leaders that I get to help be, you know, go from good to great. And the reason why I work specifically with that niche of highly successful women and top leaders is because I coach from lived, lived experience, which means mm -hmm. not only have I been a leader, so I understand the challenges of what that's like in small corporations, big corporations, bureaucratic corporations, I've done all of that within my career. Mm -hmm. And so I think that that's really valuable that I don't just have the degrees, which I obviously do. I'm a doctor in organizational psychology and I've been coaching for over 20 plus years, which gives me a wide breadth of experience. And I hone in specifically on that niche because I believe that I bring the most value from coaching from lived experience and bringing all the theory and all the frameworks along with that. I love that. Yeah, so you can kind of, you can approach things not just from a theory perspective, but from a been there, done that perspective as well. Yeah, which I think is so needed, right? I mean. It's one thing to take advice from mentors and things, but when you have a coach, you really want to make sure that they understand intimately the challenges. I mean, it's it's not easy per se, but yes, people can speak to what they think they know or what they've heard. Mm -hmm. But with the real value, I believe that my unique superpower is being able to say I've done that and I know what that challenge is like, especially being a woman in the working world. Yeah, nice. Yeah. Nice. So you use your superpowers. To, yeah. to do this coaching. Tell me, tell me about your superpowers. What are your, what are your superpowers? Let's see. I have many, um, but my top superpowers are in being able to listen in a way that allows people to be heard. I think, you know, I heard this recently, which Michael, I don't know if you feel this way, but there's a lot of communication going on in the world. And there's ways that people talk at you, to you, and um, for you. Mm -hmm. But the real, uh, I think, value of my superpower is being able to intimately understand and hear, not to um, tell you what you should do, but to understand and ask those really difficult questions that get people to reflect. And that really comes from a place of being very present and listening for understanding versus listening to tell you what to do. So that's one superpower is my ability to do that, to also meet people where they're at. Um, and I have, I've again, the honor of working with people in all different areas and facets of life, CEOs, VPs, um, entrepreneurs, creatives. And that means that I have to be able to adjust and flex to where they're at in their leadership journey and also to pre provide the valuable tools that's necessary in the moment. So mm -hmm. while a lot of people come with frameworks and canned solutions, my superpower is being able to say, here, Michael, this is exactly what I'm hearing you say right now is your most pressing need. And here are the, the, the toolkits and the frameworks and the things that I've done. And I think that's where it becomes really meaningful in the relationship where you build trust and credibility 
is being able to do that nuanced. Yes. And then my last superpower is just it, the ability to have it, have it be fun. You know, I think yeah. there's a lot of heaviness in the world. I think that there's a lot of um, things that people carry around with them. And sometimes we need a little lightness. So I'd like to bring that too into my work. Especially at high levels of leadership, right? I mean, there's a lot of pressure coming from everywhere, <laughs> coming from shareholders, everywhere, coming from shareholders, stakeholders, coming from below, coming from your left and your right. Like, yeah. Yeah. And then, you know, add that with, I recently did a keynote where I talked about leading in complex times and God, are we in complex times? We've lived through one of the most complex times recently with the pandemic. And I don't know what that was like for you, but that was really difficult. And even more so when you are in charge of people, the numbers of people as leaders are in charge of, it's so difficult to hold themselves um, accountable and centered and then lead others through difficult times. It's, yeah. So yeah. I feel like you you probably in talking to the coach that you talk to, you get a sense of that. Nice, nice. So yeah. you've got superpowers. And I, <laughs> and I can see, and I can see from your website that you've worked with Disney. When's the movie coming out? <laughs> Did, when is my movie coming out? Let's put that out there. I, <laughs> I demand to know. <laughs> Can we in Michael put that out into the universe? Just like I need a documentary about my life. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Our 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 viewers, our listeners demand a movie. I'll tell you what. It would be really. It would be an adventure. What What's the genre? It would be a documentary, but also very adventure filled and and comedic at times. Uh huh. Yeah. <laughs> it could be. Yeah. I mean, uh, a personal. A personal growth comedy. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. Like that. Working through the dark times. We got to work on the title of Michael, like of this, yeah. but it's um, one. There might, be, there might be another podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do another podcast on that one. I agree. But I think too, I mean, this gets to something mm -hmm. I was sharing with a mentor of mine recently. And I, and I fully believe this is that I am in service of, again, amplifying, not, I'm, you know, not that I'm advocating for myself, but I think that the world needs to see more folks like me, like women that are doing work in service of amplifying and advocating for other women. Um, mm -hmm. And certainly in the workplace, and I deal a lot with uh, highly successful women that have a lot of challenges still and are dealing mm -hmm. with inner critics and dealing with a lot of nuanced challenges. And I love tackling that. Nice. Yeah, what well, you were, uh, you're, you're, you're talking about your first superpower and you're talking about kind of, I guess my, my takeaway is it kind of sounded like, like active listening a little bit. Um, just it is. And then like, take it times 10. Okay. Yeah. 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 It's that, of course at the basis and then being able to connect the dots from macro context of the organization to the individual at the micro level, and then being able to solution or provide thoughts that unlock maybe challenges that they haven't really thought of in, in different ways. Mm -hmm. So, so yes. And, and I live in a world of yes. And which is yes, active listening and connecting dots and probing questions that get them to think and see things differently. Love that. I love that. That was, that was, I was having a conversation with another coach the other day um, about, we were talking about AI, right? AI has been kind of a hot button topic oh, this yeah. past year. Um, and, and it's, it's my opinion that one of the things that I'm not sure AI will ever really be able to do is that, is that, that abstract creative thinking that humans do where you you take multiple experiences that are subjective, depending on who you are, right? Everyone experiences everything very differently and uniquely. You and I might go through the same exact process and you're going to have a different takeaway than I'm going to have. And taking those personal experiences that you gain throughout your life and then looking at a problem and connecting those dots because everybody's going to connect them in different ways because everything that we've experienced is so subjective. I just don't see AI. I mean, this is really neither here nor there. I'm just, it's an interesting yeah. kind of thought experiment, right? I don't, I don't see AI being able to do that or replicate that because it's such a subjective thing. 
So I love this topic because, of course, it is on a lot of people's minds. I have colleagues and coworkers that are really experimenting with it in different ways. And and I'm never one to say it won't happen. There's it could be a possibility that it happens, that it advances so rapidly because we know technology is advancing so rapidly sure. that it might, you know, maybe in my lifetime even, you know, who knows. However, I do say that as long as we are on this planet, as humans, we are doing work through and with people. Hmm. And we are humans. So to be able to connect in the workplace, in ways that enhance trust and enhance your influence and your credibility and to uh, make revenue and also do it in a way that preserves integrity and relationships. That's what AI cannot do yet. Um, And that's what I think the coach, a, a really the right coach, when you match with the right coach, is able to help amplify and help leaders do. Mm-hmm. Um, because at the end of the day, even if I can get an essay or you know a newsletter written through Chat GPT or what have you, and it's great, I'm sure. I haven't done it yet. I hear it's great, but um, we're still doing work with people. It's with still people. Re- it's a relationship game, 100. Yeah. percent Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Totally. Um, so hey, how do you, how do you get your clients these days? How do you market yourself? Oh gosh. So it's ever evolving. So my, you know, again, I've been in the corporate world. I've done, I've led teams. So my clients come to me through knowing me in working with me or through really close referrals from trusted folks. So that's the bulk of how I get my work. And I, you know, we just talked about relationships. I, um, oh gosh, relationships are number one for me. Again, because I believe um, the highest form of flattery is when somebody refers me from knowing me or having had me as their coach. So that is um, how I market myself and, and, and really working on my thought leadership again, as a um, thought leader in the women's workplace challenges uh, that space, putting LinkedIn newsletters out there. I have a monthly newsletter called the inner game because the foundation of my coaching is built on the mindset work, emotional right. intelligence work. Um, so it's called the inner game of leadership. And then I also do um, a lot around putting perspectives and sharing content that is useful for people that are in my client base and out on LinkedIn. So yeah, nice. that's how I market myself. And for your client base, you do you work exclusively with women? Not exclusively. Yeah. And um and again, I believe it's like, can I be of service to that person? Is there a match with their needs and how I'm providing coaching? So it's not exclusive. However, that is my niche. And again, where I use my superpowers the most. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Nice. What does a typical engagement with you look like? A typical engagement is no typical, but what I will say is once I understand what the presenting challenge is, I love to do what I call like one-on-one interviews. So Michael, if you were to come to me and you're like, look, these are the things I think I need to work on. Mm -hmm. Um, There's two different paths, really. People that come to me from company sponsored ways or individually. And individually, I do like a detailed intake, get to know the person and their goals and what they want to work on. Mm -hmm. And then we'll partner you know, anywhere from four months to six months to even a year. So it really depends on the presenting challenges and meeting weekly or every other week or monthly. Really, that's negotiable between me and the individual client to um, meet and then work on the challenges. So, I mean, I'm talking broad strokes. That's individual coming to me saying, I'm going to do this um, for my own growth. Now, from a corporation sponsored perspective, it's I'll do the detailed um, one-on-one interviews with everyone that interacts with you. So I'll say, Michael, name like 10 folks that I need to go interview who can tell me how you show up internally. Then, like yeah, yep. And once I do that, I provide you with a summarized view of that. And then I go, Michael, let's build a development plan based on this. So then that will be like a six month or nine month journey in which you and I meet on a regular basis and you work that plan. Nice. Yeah. What uh, what sorts of challenges are typical for your clients? Oh, gosh. I do so much around, for women, um, inner critic work. Uh-huh. So that's linked to imposter syndrome. A lot, you know, that, that whole category yep. of 
advocating for themselves? How do they have lasting confidence versus situational confidence? So I do a lot around that executive presence and authentic leadership. And I think that's a really important one for women these days is I'm in this all male tech startup. How, how do I show up? What, what does it even look like to be me in a, in a leader uh, in this space? So there's that whole bucket. And then for, you know, others, the more kind of broader um, pressing challenges that come to me are, are around, gosh, Michael, this person's so technically smart at their job. They really don't know how to lead. They're kind of um, really triggered easily. They don't handle stressful situations well, that type of thing where um, we have to give them different coping skills. Mm -hmm. Interesting. And do you only work in, in kind of these like larger corporate environments or do you work with smaller businesses, uh, entrepreneurs, that sort of thing? Do you that, that stuff as well? Yes. <laughs> um, and I think that that's, what the my background lends itself to so i mean again i've been in corporations 15 plus years my own journey meant i started out at jet propulsion lab which is a nasa center so i worked literally and i say this all the time i work with rocket scientists michael like i was the young kid put in front of scientists and engineers and teaching them how to lead so like i learned how to have gravitas pretty quickly and how to have lasting confidence and then I jumped from engineering to financial services. So I have a breadth of experience in um, companies of that nature. And then I went to entertainment and then I did stints in startup world. So I have so much to pull from, which makes it again, valuable for the person that's like, do you understand yeah. startup culture? Yeah, I get startup culture. I get big box entertainment. So the last 10 years of my career internal has been with entertainment and media and creatives and working with them. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Have you, so have you always been in, in kind of the, uh, the leadership track in, in, in organizations? Yeah. You know, my PhD is in organizational psychology and right. that's just a fancy way of saying, yes, I've been doing what's now known as talent management for over 20 plus years, but really honed in on coaching halfway through my career and specialized in that because again that was like oh I can make such an impact in ways that I don't see working with teams necessarily and I also do group coaching as well so that's a part of the repertoire of the way of you know um, making an impact but one-on-one -on -one coaching certainly and internally I was doing everything soup to nuts talent management that's culture work that's org design all the things yeah, yeah. nice and you wrote a book I wrote a book and you're writing a second book, but the book that you wrote, we'll talk about, we'll talk about the first book first, Let's do things in order. Yes. Uh, mommy tracked. Yeah. Tell so, me about that. Yeah. So mommy tracked is it, the full titles, how to take authentic risks and find success on your terms. You know, I'm looking over there cause I'm like, that's my book right there. It's over there. <laughs> yeah. It's over there. So this book is not, and I have to say this is not just for women that have kids. It's really about helping women identify what success looks like for them uniquely. Um, and why that's important is that a lot of clients I work with and myself too, we get wrapped around like what we should do. Oh, I should be a doctor. I should be a lawyer because that's what my parents expect of me. And especially from a immigrant perspective, I grew up, I'm just going to ask. I was just going to ask. Yeah. Being South Korean, there were explicit and not so explicit things that I grew up with about what I should do. So a lot of that is unlearning that to strip away what you think others want you to do and identifying what it is you truly, what truly lights you up and going for that unapologetically. And, you know, that takes a lot of courage. It takes a lot of mindset work and a lot of reflection as well. So the book is like having a coach in, in the book that, provides prompts and things for you to think about um, and the foundations for how to go about identifying success for yourself and going after it. Mm -hmm. So that's mommy tracked. Um, and it was launched in 2020. And what I know so far is that it resonates for so many, not just women, but men as well. And how do they support women that want to identify with their own um, definition of success? So I love that. I, I'm, I'm going to, I, I can see right now I'm going to have to buy a copy of that book from my wife who's, who's 
kind of a new mom. We've got a 14 month old daughter. She was she's Chinese American, born in Hangzhou, and she immigrated when she was maybe four years old. Mm -hmm. um, and of course, she also is a she's a doctor of physical therapy because as an immigrant child, that's what you do. You become a doctor or a lawyer or something like that. Yes, yes. <laughs> I and feel like talk to your wife. <laughs> yeah, and she's and she's so right now too. So she's struggling with um, the sh what she really wants to do is is do more chronic pain coaching. So she's a physical therapist mm -hmm. specializing in chronic pain, mm -hmm. and she really wants to do coaching. And she's I think right now is is having some of these identity struggles, right, of of who she is and like what is the right thing for her to do. Um, you know, given the way that she was raised and the values that were embedded deep within her from day one. Oh, yeah. I uh, offline, Michael, you and I, she introduced me to your wife, but um, <laughs> I, I see a lot of similarities. You know, I came to the States at six. Uh -huh. So there was a lot of that kind of tension, internal tension. Mm -hmm. And um, so there are definite, I identify with her story and there's definite strategies explicitly that she can try um and one that's identifying what is it that you want to do and it sounds like she's already there with knowing so then it's really how do you take i'm and i'm so passionate about this micro steps yeah and the book talks about this it's like don't boil the ocean and try to figure out what everything is uh -huh. after that take the next best step and then keep moving forward uh -huh. and then pivoting as you need to and you know i know these are kind of broader terms but when you can identify the next best step that will lead you to the next thing and i think we get caught up as people of like trying to figure it all out knowing everything and life doesn't work that way well yeah. especially as as you know kind of uh high achievers mm -hmm. it having having everything like i think she i think she wants to i think she wants to have everything mapped out you know what yeah. i mean and yeah. just taking just taking the next logical step doesn't feel like enough. Um, and and I think you know there's definitely inner critic stuff there, um, in in the in the whole idea of of changing careers. Uh, yeah. It's obviously there's a lot of fear involved too in 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 all of it. Absolutely. So I think, uh, uh, yeah, I'll, we'll, 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 we'll talk offline more about that and I'll have to get a copy of that book. I'm happy to send you a copy. And I think, you know, the core of that is the fear is, um, are you listening to, to your, um, inner intuition and guide more often than the fear? I mean, those yeah. are the decisions that we need to be anchoring around and certainly happy to talk more, but yeah, I think the book could help her. Yeah. I love it. And congrats love on your it. child and your kid. Thank you. She's, yeah, her name's Opal. Oh. Uh, she's 14 months old and she is a a goddamn gem. She's amazing. <laughs> I love 14 months old. They're so much fun. Yeah, yeah. She's she's walking around and she's she's talking. Not English quite yet, but she's talking. Like yeah. things are being said that she seems to understand more than we do and she's like why doesn't anyone pick up what i'm saying let's go people come on everybody <laughs> i um yeah i have kids and i don't know if i shared this with you michael but mine are now 13 11 and 8. okay yeah and every age has challenges and i still feel like every age is so fun it's so fun uh -huh. i mean they to see them grow into their own selves and and develop their own passions oh there's yeah. nothing more enriching than that yeah. yeah i'm i'm you know as as a as a first time father i'm really looking forward to her getting a little bit older um so that you know so that we can do more interesting things yeah. <laughs> other, other than yeah, I mean, we have fun though, and and you know, for me, like I've been blessed. I I'm I work from home. Yeah. Um, my wife is a director at a physical therapy clinic, so she goes into work part time, um, and I have been way more involved in in Opal's life, I think, than a lot of dads are able to be in their children's lives, especially at this age. So that's, yeah. I'm, I'm super grateful about that, and. And yes, and. <laughs> yes, and yeah, yes, and I love that you are so active in Opal's life. Yeah, and I do think that that is um, a gift that you're fully there. 
when you can be. And yeah, it's really, it's hard. I, I'm, you know, from a, I mean, every age and stage presents its own challenges as I shared, but I think with my third child and I love him dearly, but by the time I had my third, I was like, I don't, I don't want to play trains with you anymore. <laughs> I'm over it, kid. <laughs> I'm over it. So I get that desire to have them grow up and be like, Rah. come on, self-sufficient. Yeah. I yeah. Yeah. Or just like, you know, let's, I got I got some work to do, you know, outside in the yard. Let's come, come help me do that. <laughs> let's, let's bond yeah. something like that, you know. Yeah, I know. We'll I know. <laughs> but uh, for now, you know, it's she's been sick the last few days and she's such a mm. trooper. And it's just, you know, she, at this size, when you hold them and they just like grab you back and nuzzle into your neck. I mean, be still my heart. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I get that. Oh, gosh. <laughs> okay. I digress. <laughs> Listen, this is not a podcast about fatherhood. <laughs> no, I know. Well, it was it, your book, Mommy Tracked, got me got me going on down down that path. So I blame you. Um, I, was, I own that. Let's, yeah, I'll take it. <laughs> tell me tell me about your second book that you're currently writing or it's, it's publishing later this year, I think. Yeah. And yeah. before I'd love to share what came in between that. Um, I recently did a TEDx talk that I'm really thrilled about. Awesome. And it's for the TEDx Flatbush stage. It was held in Brooklyn. And it's a, the title is Thriving Through Change. And it is such a, I think it's a needed talk because hello, obviously I did that, but, but beyond that, we've all been through change, really traumatic change as a collective world. And there is no stopping change. So how do we stay resilient? How do we thrive through it rather than feel like we're being taken under by it? So that was the talk and it'll be out within the next three weeks. And certainly by the time the, this podcast is out, um, it will be out as well. So there's that. And then my second book is um, launching in October. And nice. gosh, this book is so, so um, filled with wisdom. And the reason why I say that is it, I did, I took a year to do a survey of the clients I got to work with who were open to me surveying them about um, the deep wisdom that they share with their inner circle. So, it, you know, what women do is like, we get into our little circles and we go, blah, blah, blah. This is what I would do different. This is what I regret. This is what's really lighting me up. And we share in our inner circles. Yet what I wanted to do was amplify it, kind of like um, deconstruct it so that everyone can have insight into what they would do differently. You know, how are, how did they get there? get where they are now and what would you um, tell your younger self what would you say about your life now and really the concept of being invited into my kitchen table which you know is a way of connecting and having deep conversations so that's the premise of the book around this these you know core tenets of change and resilience and career and mindset and you know all the things that we want to amplify for other women so that they can succeed in their own way so it's it's a still um my story but more importantly the stories of women that allowed me to interview them for this right. book yeah i i love that i i have a fondness a special fondness for those kinds of books that are like they're like curated crowdsourced wisdom so it's not just you know you know what i mean it's like it's not just the author kind of standing on a stage talking about their wisdom and their experience there's also this kind of like greater wisdom i guess yeah, <laughs> that yes. all kind of comes together in one place <laughs> with with you know a, a common thread yeah yeah, because I always say, like, when I'm doing leadership offsites, I, I, my thing is, there's so much wisdom in the room. And that's, you know, what the take on the book is, is, look, beyond me, I want to highlight all of the experiences brought into this book through these women at my table, and hope that we can help others really learn and what I would say, like, um, get it quickly, faster than I learned it myself. Yeah. Nice. How far along in the book are you? I'm curious to know if you have an answer to this yet. Maybe you don't. That's okay. Um, how are how is the book organized? Mm, yes, it's organized through um, like uh, 
the tenets of what I call like mindset um, challenges. So kind of like pillars of what's a core challenge? What's a work thing you would do differently? Like, uh, what do you call those? Like, what would you call that, Michael? Um, uh, premise? Premises? Yes. Yeah premises and so every woman gets to have their own voice within the premises um we start with mindset and why that's so important yeah and then we break down each chapter like that so right now to answer your question i'm in the editing yeah. furiously working on editing the chapters so that we can get it out in october awesome very cool yeah. uh pre-order Oh gosh, yeah. I mean, that'll probably happen in September. I don't know this stuff yet. <laughs> I so the last two podcasts that I recorded were with uh, book book publisher, book publishing coaches. Um, so this is all like very fresh in my mind. So I know the right questions to ask. <laughs> oh, I love that because I'm like, how do you know this stuff? But yeah, there's going to be an ability to pre-order in the awesome. fall. Yeah. Cool. Very cool. Yeah. Um, sweet. What else? Uh, let's see here. I'm just looking no, at my. Time has gone. It's already been like work. Yeah, 45 minutes or so. Yeah. Um, what sort of things did you first struggle when you with when you started when you first decided to branch out from leadership roles and companies and try coaching for the first time? Mm, what, yeah. where, what struggles did you have then? Oh my gosh. So by the way, I'm do I'm going to do a session on entrepreneurship with a dear friend and colleague of mine who's coming out from Australia. So I'll just uh, put the plug that um, it's happening in July because it gets to this topic. And I was sharing this with somebody else who just started their own business today. So in our call, she asked that same question. And Michael, like, I have to tell you what I was clear about is my niche, who I'm in service of highly successful women, emerging leaders and executives. Great. I got that down. I know I want to coach. And then what else do I need? Well, I definitely need a website because that's like the calling card these days, right? That's like the business card of today's world. Digital storefront. Yeah. yeah. Beyond that, it's been um, honestly a series of evolution, like iterative evolutions, if that makes sense. And yeah. that, okay, I know what I core want to do. I know I need a website and I, I have some clients that want to work with me. So then trusting each interaction and um, where I felt a call in terms of like lit up following that and, and being very, very scared and having times of like, I'm never going to get a client again. I just know it. Mm -hmm. And then taking another step forward and going, okay, well, maybe it's not as bad as I make it out to be and with my inner critic being really loud sometimes. So when I say I coach from lived experience, it's exactly that. I am not absent of inner critic. I'm not absent of fear. But what I choose to do is to anchor on what's the next best step and try that and see where it takes me. Mm -hmm. um, I definitely have a vision. I have a North Star that I anchor to. Mm -hmm. But my philosophy is how I get there. That's the fun. Like, yeah, you know, I'm going to publish my second book, certainly. But how I do that, I'm not so tied to. So I think that's where the the following the passion comes in for me. Love that. I love that. Yeah. That's so, no, that's great. That's, that's brilliant. That's brilliant because what you're doing, you're really like, and I've done this before as well. In fact, I was telling you before we started recording that, that, that my family, we live on 30 acres in the mountains We're we're off grid. This all happened through, through this visioning practice that we did. It wasn't really vision boarding, but it was like, we wrote down kind of our perfect average day and we focused on this vision that we had. And we're like looking at each other like, how in the hell are we going to make this happen? No clue. It took us about nine months and it, and, and it just happened because we were focused on it. We had no clue how we were going to make it happen. Oh, and, yeah. it, and it just worked. So what you're talking about, right? You want to you know you want to publish a book. You don't really, how, how it happens is, is secondary. It doesn't even mm -hmm. really matter. It's going to happen. Yeah. And so that's where I ask people, pay attention, pay attention to the opportunities that come to you, pay attention yeah. to the connections, because those are the things you follow to make that ultimate goal come to life. And yes, to your point, Michael, like focus on it. And this is where I advise entrepreneurs in particular, like be careful of how you spend your day mm -hmm. and how you spend your energy. And that is an evolution with time you learn, okay, I don't want to spend my energy in this way. So how do I craft it in service of my ultimate vision? Yeah. So my business has changed on the inner workings of how I schedule my day 
um, to be uber focused, right? Yeah. And service my clients, my book and all the keynotes that I do. But your point is well taken, which is have the focus and the vision and then, you know, have fun with making it come to life. Totally. Yeah. You're as a psychologist, you're probably familiar with the particular activation system. Yeah. It's like, yeah. you know, when you get, to, when you buy a new Kia car, all of a sudden you notice all the Kias out on the road. So if you're focused, all, all we did was just focus on the result that we wanted. And then the opportunities that came our way that may have come our way anyway, we were focused on, we knew what we were looking for. So we, we started to notice stuff. Yes. Right. Yes. Yeah. And yeah, it, works, and it works. It works. It's, it's like magic. This is, I, I think it's a big part of like this, the secret, um, or, or like when, you know, the, the universe providing for you, uh, and, you know, if you want to make it kind of woo woo stuff, you just, you start noticing all these things that are, that are coming along if you're well, focused on the right things. Yeah. And I think that that term is popularized. What I will say to that is, you know, it's the mindset work that makes that happen. Yeah. So when you're talking about focus and paying attention, that's reorient and reframing experiences to support your vision. Um, say I had an experience that I thought I would look at it from a really historically biased way or just like a repetitive pattern. How about we reframe that and see what's possible, right? So one of the things that I really believe deeply in is anchor on what's possible and versus like, oh gosh, that sucked or, or that wasn't possible. Yes, it might've. And yes. And if it sucked and what's possible still. Mm -hmm. So that's the mindset stuff that I'm so passionate about because that is what makes the magic work. Yeah. I dig it. I love <laughs> it. You're my favorite. You're so you do. I want to go back to all your podcasts and you're going to say like that to everyone. <laughs> I don't, I swear to God. Uh, so he, this has been fantastic. I want to be respectful of your time. Is there anything that we have not talked about that you would like an opportunity to, to chat about before we wrap up? No, I mean, thank you for giving me the form. I, I talked about the book coming out in October. I want people to find me, connect with me and find me on LinkedIn and my website, which I believe you will list. And let's continue the conversation. If they resonated with me, let's go. Beauty. I love it. I love it. Um, we will have uh, links to everything that we can get links for on the show notes page. We'll definitely get a link to uh, to the book. The TEDx talk is not yet published, but it will be soon. It will be because we're now to April. It will be in May. Yeah. Awesome. So we'll get we'll have a link to that by the time this by the time this airs. Um, sweet. That's great. Thank you, Sohi. Thank you, Michael. <laughs> and thank you, of course, as always, to our listeners and viewers. Uh, you guys are awesome. Without you, none of this means anything. So uh, thank you, as always, and we will see you guys next time. Keep listening. See ya. Bye. <laughs> All right. That was great. Oh, that was fun. Good work. Good work. You've done a podcast before, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> I have done many. Yes, it's so fun for me. Thousands and thousands and thousands. Um, Not thousands yet, but yeah, I'll get there. I'm 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 serious. I need to get a copy of your book and oh. introduce you to the wifey. Michael, let me send it to you. What's um if you don't mind sharing, what is an address? Let me I, I that's very sweet of you. I would love that. Let me type I'll uh, type it into the chat. Does that work? Yes. Um, because I would love to, for her to read it. I think she would get a lot out of it. 29 Pilton Way, Suite 964. There you go. Awesome. I'm happy to send a copy. Yeah. What, she, what is her name? Her name is, uh, her name is Pan Zhang. Cool. Um... Yeah, she's definitely like she's one of she's one of those types who will she'll just go into planning mode and she'll never ever ever leave because it's mm -hmm. safe. And so, but but she's been she's been good about it and and I'll, you know, try to put the the thing is I'm not I'm not a coach and I'm also a spouse, which means I'm not a great coach for her. <laughs> Your job is just to go, I know, honey. Oh, I yeah, know. totally. Yeah, like like just vent, go ahead, empty. I'm here. I'm listening. <laughs> Yeah, I bet you had to learn that pretty quick. I did. Well, I I still work on it. I'm not, yeah, I'm not fantastic at it, but we yeah. always learning, always practicing. Yeah, um, I but yeah.
So I think uh, I, I think that it sounds like the book would be good for. Her. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, and um, yeah, I mean, I think for her, it's all like in the micro actions. Hello, what's the next step? Get it out of the head onto action. Totally, totally. And it's action, I think, is the key word. Don't don't get it out. Don't get it out of your head and onto paper. She's already done that. <laughs> paper, the paper thing's not action. It's really just staying stuck. And I, I mean, I think it's the thing of like, she's probably, I'm guessing, wired around perfect action. There's no perfect action. It's yeah. just take yes. action. She, because she's like, yeah, and, and she, you know, she's trying to build a little course thing and the course has to be perfect. And I'm like, it doesn't have to be perfect. Screw it up. Like do, do a crappy version and sell it for 200 bucks and, and learn then, from it and then make it better and sell it for 500 bucks and then make it better and sell it for a thousand bucks. Yes, yes, yes. That's the launch, learn, iterate philosophy that you just yeah. talked about. Yes, absolutely. Um, um anyways appreciate it thank you so much for your time if 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 it's cool with you i would love to send you an email and introduce you to her please because yes. as an entrepreneur she might you, you might even get a client out of this <laughs> i you know i'm happy to help please do connect us if there's other podcasts that you think i would the person would you know and i would fit please refer okay. me to other podcasts i love doing them I have I have another podcast that I do that that has a huge 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 listenership. It gets like I want to say it gets like twenty thousand downloads per month. Um, <clears throat> and it is and for that podcast I I host a, a show on the so it's a podcast with multiple hosts and I have a show on it and my show is all about authority and trust. Ooh. business and how authority and trust gives a business leverage over other businesses. Does that sound like something you uh, can talk on fluently? Michael, yeah, authority yeah. and trust. I have to do that all the time. Sweet. Let's, uh, do you want to just get something on the calendar right now? Yes. For that? Absolutely. That would um, be rad. Um, when do you record? I could, what, what is your, I mean, what's your schedule like? What's your schedule like on Friday morning? Is that too soon? Yeah. Um, okay. I've, the next two weeks are crazy. So can we do, what about the afternoon of Thursday, the 11th? Ooh, like, uh, one or two. I could do, oh wait, hold on, never mind. Never mind, I'm, I apologize. I'm on daddy duty all day on Thursday the 11th. <laughs> Don't forget that. It no, would be, no. She's gonna kill you. <laughs> I know, I can't forget, I can't forget daddy duty. Uh, what about Wednesday the 17th at 3.30 or four? Is that too Perfect. late? No, that's perfect. I could do four. Four? Okay. Let's plan the 17th at 4 p.m. Is there a title to it? I'll send you a proper calendar link with a Zoom link and everything. Uh, but awesome. yeah, the title is Authority's Edge. Mm. Authority's Edge. Got it. That's going to be so fun. I am doing that all the time. I mean, with new people, with leaders. Yeah. It's, it's, it's such a, I think it's, 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 it's such a huge part of business and it's such a huge part of, it's such a huge part of marketing that makes the sales process almost like just non-existent. Mm -hmm. Like if you do the marketing right with, by building authority and building trust, the, there, there's just, there's no sale. Like people just come to you when the time is right. And they're like, I want to hire you. I already know who you are. I already trust you. Let's go. Yeah. And that's why when I put um, marketing in quotes when I, when you ask me that, because it's like, yes, I do stuff on LinkedIn, but it's really through interactions and building trust. Yep. Yep. I mean, that's, that's marketing. Yeah. Yeah. yeah totally. <laughs> totally. Awesome. I will send you a calendar link for that. And I will message you. I'll send you an email later this week as well when I figure out when your pod's going to come out. 
for this okay. one. Cool. And um, I'll send your wife the book. Beauty, thank you so much. You're welcome. I'll talk Take to you care. later. Bye. Bye.